Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this device right here, the controversial Pixel 6a. So if you haven't already checked out my first impressions, I'll leave a card above. But yeah, there's a lot of bashing towards this device pretty much just because of the 60 hertz. And in this video, I'm gonna kind of overlook that and talk about some of the benefits this phone really does have because it does actually have quite a lot of benefits. So in terms of the price point, this phone prices in at $450 or 399 pounds. And for that, you're getting pretty decent build quality. Now you're getting this aluminum frame on the side here, plastic buttons, a plastic back, which really does feel like glass. I couldn't really tell the difference personally from when I was holding it, I had to actually research it. And then on the front, you're getting Gorilla Glass 3. So Gorilla Glass 3 is kind of bad in terms of the scratch resistance. I honestly find this screen really prone to scratches. So you'll definitely want to put a screen protector on here. But yeah, in terms of the build quality, it's definitely a step up from the Pixel 4a 5G or the Pixel 5a 5G. This phone feels a lot more premium in the hand. In terms of the overall shape though, it's a lot more boxy. You're getting more squared off corners and the whole phone is just less rounded feeling than the last Pixels. I personally kind of did like that rounded feel I mentioned in my first impressions video. And I'm still sticking with my word. I don't really like the sharp edges as much. And even with the screen, it just feels a little bit 90 degree, you know, the corners. I like it when it's a lot more rounded. So let's talk a little bit about the screen. So obviously a lot of people are bashing it because of 60 Hertz. If you're coming from a 60 Hertz device, an existing device like the Samsung Galaxy S10, or you're coming from an iPhone 12 or before that, you're gonna be okay. If you're used to 60 Hertz, you're not gonna notice the difference with this phone and it's still gonna feel snappy to you. And if you're coming over from a high refresh rate phone, then yes, you're gonna notice it's a little bit more janky and a little bit more choppy than you're used to, but I kind of guarantee over time you will get used to it because I came from a 120 Hertz phone to a 60 Hertz phone. And I can honestly say that I did adjust to it. But everything else about the display is really nice. It has pretty decent viewing angles. There is some slight color shift if you tilt it really, really far and look at it side on, but nobody really does that. And in terms of the resolution, you're getting a full HD OLED panel. So it does get pretty bright, very vibrant colors, very rich, deep blacks. I personally think this is a very sharp and pleasant screen to look at. I honestly can say it really does look just as good as my iPhone or any other device, really. They're all starting to look very similar in terms of quality. So yeah, I would say the screen's definitely a go. I like the screen. I like the small hole punch at the top for the front facing camera. It's a lot nicer and it's a lot more symmetrical than it was before in the corner. So I definitely dig that. Now inside of this screen, you're getting an optical fingerprint scanner, and that means that it does require light to shine through. So if you're in a dark place or you have a dark wallpaper, it's gonna have a little white circle and shine light in order to read your fingerprint. And it can be a little bit slow at times. It's not quite as fast as on the 6 and 6 Pro. It's maybe a fraction of a second slower, but honestly, from my experience, I don't really notice it too much. And it does seem to be very accurate. I can say almost every time I put my finger on here, it does unlock and I really love the positioning of it. I find it really easy to just put my finger on the right spot every single time. Now, in terms of what's actually powering this device and how it is to use, it is powered by the Tensor chip. So it has the same level of performance as the flagship pixels, which I can say seems like a pretty good deal. Seems like a pretty good bang for your buck to get the flagship chip inside of a, a $450 phone. In terms of RAM, there is six gigabytes, but overall, when you're actually using this phone, it feels really fluid, it's quick to open applications. If you're closing large applications and going back to them later, they are gonna stay in the background. I feel like it's really well optimized, even though six gigabytes might seem a little bit low in 2022, especially for Android, Google really does have it well optimized. And I found even when I'm split screen multitasking, even when I'm using large applications, switching back and forwards, none of the apps actually went ahead and restarted. But one of the main reasons people are probably gonna sacrifice that high refresh rate for 60 Hertz on this device is because they want a Pixel. And this definitely doesn't disappoint. This phone is jam packed with all the Google software features that make it really fun and really great to use. It has the latest Google Assistant, the latest software updates and security patches. You have five years of updates supported on this phone. So even in five years time, you're gonna be getting security updates which is kind of unbelievable for Android. Normally things don't last too long, maybe a year or two or three at best, but Google's providing five for this device. So this device definitely is gonna be a little bit more future-proof than every other phone out there. 
but I love the software on this. I love stock Android, there's minimal bloatware. You have all those really great Google applications and you don't have duplicate applications like you do on Samsung phones or Honor phones or Huawei, whatever. Any of those other phones, they all have bloatware and skins overlaid on top of Android. The reason you're actually sacrificing a lot of features and hardware in order to get your hands on a Pixel is because of this software experience. You're getting Android 12, soon to be Android 13. You're getting Material U, all those beautiful widgets and the beautiful design of stock Android, as well as just the fluid performance. I personally am a massive fan of stock Android. I hate all the, the skins out there. They just don't really look good to me. And I think Google knows the best in terms of how to make something look aesthetically pleasing. So for me, hands down, having stock Android, having Material U, and having this really great experience with all the Google software is definitely a massive bonus which other phones just don't have. Another area this phone really shines is the camera, and that is partly due to the Google software. So the cameras in here are both 12 megapixel. You'll find that it's the same sensor as on the Pixel 2, surprisingly. So Pixel 2, Pixel 3, Pixel 4, all of those phones have the same sensor. And this phone camera actually performs better than ever. It performs better than some flagships this year. And the reason for that is computational photography. So Google doesn't necessarily have the best hardware in the world, and they don't necessarily have the most cameras, but they're really good at optimizing pictures. They're really good at taking multiple pictures, overlaying them on top of each other, and getting really great dynamic range, actually bringing depth to the image through AI, and also identifying objects in your image. Obviously, you have Google Lens in here. You have the magic eraser feature, which can go ahead and remove unwanted objects from photos. Google really knows how to build software for a phone. The only area I can say I don't like about the camera is video. Video is just a little bit over sharpened. There's a really big crop factor. So, you know, you can't really get wide angle video on this phone. It just kind of looks garbage, honestly. And I just don't like the way it looks. It just doesn't look as nice in terms of the colors, in terms of the depth, it just feels very flat. And I can say, I also don't really like the front camera too much. It is okay in direct sunlight, but when you're in low light conditions, I find it's just really, really bad, really grainy and you have to actually hold your phone in position for quite a long time because it has a massive shutter delay as well. So that's something I don't really like, but I don't really use the front camera too much. Other than that, there's no headphone jack anymore. So you just have a USB-C port at the bottom. You do have stereo speakers. So you have a down firing speaker as well as an earpiece speaker. They're okay. They're not the, the best thing in the world. There isn't much bass. There's a lot of clarity and it's pretty decent if you're listening to vocals, if you're watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts. But yeah, there's just not much bass or range when you're listening to music. This is one of my all time favorite budget Pixel phones, and it really does pack a punch in terms of the usability as well as the. The last thing I can really say about this device that I don't like is the fact there's no wireless charging. So if you want to go ahead and throw this on a wireless charger, maybe you have some around the house. I actually do. I have a lot of wireless chargers all over the place. And the fact this doesn't have wireless charging is so annoying because I just want to throw it down and charge when I'm at my desk or when I go to bed. I just want to throw on the charger. I don't want to have to find cables in the drawer and plug it in. And even when you do plug it in, it's not even that fast because it's still only 18 watts. So you're going to find yourself waiting quite a while for this phone to actually charge up. In terms of the battery life of this guy, it's got a 4,410 milliamp hour battery. It's a pretty big cell and honestly, considering Google software is really well optimized and you have the Tensor chip and you have 60 Hertz, this thing actually does have pretty great battery life. I found myself getting about eight or nine hours of screen on time and easily I could use this phone for a couple days with no problem and I wouldn't really need to recharge it. So that alone kind of eases the fact there's no wireless charging and the charging is only 18 watts. So yeah, I'll kind of give it to the Pixel for that one. Battery life is pretty great. In terms of storage, you have 128 gigabytes built into the device, but you no longer have unlimited photo support for Google Photos, which kind of sucks. I feel like that was one of the main features of the Pixel, the fact that you know you can take pictures with this great camera and have unlimited amounts stored in Google Cloud. That kind of sucks that they don't do that anymore. And there's no external storage either. So you're stuck with the 128 that's built into this device. So I've clarified all the hardware, all the software, all the best things about this device and kind of all the gimmicky bad things about it. So would I recommend it? Well, it depends honestly on the price this phone is selling for in your home country. If you're in India, if you're in some country where the, the price of this phone is, is a lot higher than in the US, then 
I probably wouldn't recommend it, honestly. I would say try and find a cheaper alternative with better specs. And there might be more phones out there in your own country than I have here. But for me, this is a good price here, 399 pounds. And it's got a pretty good trade-in program. So if you have an old Pixel and you trade it into Google, they'll give you a pretty good price for this phone. You can pick it up for about 150 pounds or 200 pounds or something, as long as you trade in an old device. So for me, it's worth it. I think this phone has a great camera. It's definitely nice to use. It performs well. It's got great battery life. And the screen is really nice to look at. I would like it at 90 hertz a little bit better, but it doesn't. So we're not gonna really talk about that anymore. But yeah, this is a, a great phone for the price point, if you can get it at that price. And I would recommend it. If you want software updates, you want the Pixel experience, you want all of the, the fun Google features, then yeah, this is still a Pixel and you're still gonna enjoy it and it's still a great phone. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed and remember to subscribe. It really does help me out. A lot of you guys aren't subscribed that watch my content. So if you could click that subscribe button and the bell icon, that would mean the world to me. I would really, really appreciate it. But I will see you guys later. Peace.